Hello, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com and today thanks to photostrada.com I can present you the Canon 90D at last. Let's start. Well, 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 at last many, many, many people have asked me uh, about the 90D and uh, I could not have it because uh, this is the demo uh, camera uh, Photostra lends me and uh, for Christmas and all these uh, holidays uh, it was not possible to have it available so at last I've got it I can try it I thank them for that and I'm going to give you my opinion I will show you a few pictures I've made and uh, short videos I, I didn't make that many but enough for me to have my impression of course as always I speak about what I think what I feel using the camera if you want all the specs you can go to Canon uh, website and then you have the full specs but here I will tell you the main ones and also uh, what's important for me, okay? And uh, what I feel, if I like it, if I don't like it. This is an APS-C camera. Uh, as you know, uh, Canon said the 7D Mark II will not be replaced. So basically, this is the top of APS-C reflex camera by Canon. Uh, obviously, the 7D Mark II is still made, but uh, the latest made, created, built is this one. Uh, it has a resolution of 32.5 megapix. Uh, for me, it sounds massive. I think the top quality uh, in APS-C format is around 24 uh, megapix. But obviously, with this uh, megapixel war, Canon has no other option than uh, putting more megapixel in their camera uh, because otherwise people think uh, they're not good cameras. I think this is stupid because uh, I live very well with my uh, 16 megapixel in micro four thirds many people still use 20 22 24 megapixel and they're really happy it, uh, it's perfect no problem but they've put 32.5 and i think the results are there anyway but uh okay i think it was not needed marketing wise it was needed technical uh, te technical wise i don't think it was that that much urgent or a necessity okay it's weight seven seven hundred grams so it's not too heavy so people want to uh, use it for vlogging all this video all this handheld that's okay it does video 4k and uh, it is sealed uh, dust and uh, humidity so uh, actually when you look at it you, you do see it's been thought as a uh, top of the range uh, some people say oh isn't it uh, top of the range well Yes and no. I mean, if you think the top of the range in APS-C reflex camera by Canon is the 7D Mark II, it's not top. But if you think that you have a 2000D, 4000D, 800D, uh, many on the line, yes, this is uh, top. But they did treat it as a pro uh, level camera. Uh, I don't think, I, I've got a video saying that there is no professional cameras, but I meant camera that can be used by pros or are usually used by pros and I think this is one of them. Battery life, 1300 pictures on one single charge if you use it as a reflex. If you use it with live view, 400 shots. It's still a lot because it's more than many, uh, many mirrorless cameras. So uh, big applause uh, for Canon, 1300 shots on one single charge, it's great. ISO. It goes from 100 ISO up to uh, 25,600 ISO. As always, the top two or top three ISO range are normally to save your life. I mean, you're a paparazzi and you want the picture and uh, you get it and uh, quality is not that important. So as always, top uh, ISO is not much, not too good. So I pass you some pictures I made at 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, 6400, 12600, and 25800. So, my conclusion is uh, up to 3200, it's acceptable. It's at well, 100, it's completely acceptable. At 3200, it's acceptable. 6400 is savable. 1200, 12800, 12, and uh, 12600, and 25800. 600 i think uh it's for paparazzi uh, like you need the picture and quality is uh is really bad and uh, you don't actually have any other choice and pushing uh the iso up and you use it but 
honestly, if you want to, serious, to do serious work, I don't think they are usable uh, ISO. But up to 3200, that's fine, and 6400 is saveable. So if I compare to my 5D Mark II, which is many years ago, and I did some wedding with that low light, uh, no problem, it does the same. So uh, I would probably uh, use perfectly this camera to do wedding with low light. Obviously, if you're an ISO freak, and uh, you want you think about the 100 is or 100,000 iso of uh, sony for example you will feel this is really not much but if you're a good photographer and know that the iso is not key but knowing how to make a picture and seeing the light or lighting the scene or whatever then this is perfectly usable and this is more than enough so i think the iso is fine <music> There is sensor cleaning, as most cameras nowadays, but don't forget that the, the key to not getting your sensor dirty is the way you use your camera. Uh, where you use it, but this one is sealed against dust and humidity, but uh, if uh, you change lenses, this is when dust comes in. So always do it indoor, or under your coat, or, and always uh, with the, the lens facing down. This way, uh, nothing like, drop of water or whatever won't fall on the, in the camera so uh, the way you change lenses is key for uh, not getting dust in your camera the autofocus has 45 uh, crossed uh, dots some people say 45 only but i see my mirrorless camera that's 140 150 or whatever and uh, this is only 45 oh come on i use only one anyway myself some people use more but honestly in a reflex camera 45 is more than enough in any camera anyway but this is more than enough and uh, it works fine it was good but there is a small secret in there i'm speaking about the dslr side of it and you have your uh, autofocus you know that uh, canon is not too good at low light uh, focusing this one is not doing too bad but if you go with live view then you get the dual pixel and dual pixel autofocus is brilliant if i do a, a burst uh, with the autofocus in reflex mode mm, some shot will be missed but with dual pixel it was great it works really nice so i, I think you have a great uh, dual system in there the dual pixel and the classical uh, reflex uh, autofocus and the dual pixel is brilliant so autofocus fine you have also eye detect so it follows the eye and it works really nice it works nice uh, well really well so uh, good point speed from 30 seconds up to 8 thousandths of a second uh, normally I, I don't know if the ATD at 8 thousandths of a second or 4 thousandths of a second I'm not sure I think it was 4 thousandths so uh, this is like a pro grade uh, rate and uh, if you do action photography 8 thousand is something many people need if you go with the electronic shutter in live view then it's 16 16 thousand uh, of a second so it's hard to say this I don't know can, can people say that 16,000 why not okay you know what I mean okay of a second and yeah well you did get it okay so uh, for speed that's nice the viewfinder 100% uh, here you have the diopter correction but 100% uh, it's what people uh, pro uh, need they want to see exactly what will be uh, at the end when, when finishing the picture when the picture is finished so you don't want that you see your framing and then you have some extra after pro don't want that they want what you see what you get okay so 100% the screen screen is touchable fully touchable and orientable as you can see it's a flip screen okay so many people want to use the flip screen to do uh, some vlogging like this okay so I'm going to show you well here okay like this I'm going to show you an example of uh, vlogging and I did it with a 50 millimeter because I asked Photosola to lend me a 50 millimeter not a typical kit lens I wanted to have a higher quality the 50 meter 1.4 so obviously for vlogging it's a bit too too small I don't need, I need a wider it's a bit too narrow so uh, you'll see it's funny but uh, you see how it works so trying some vlogging style uh, of course with the 50 millimeter I'm just uh, fit just in the size of the screen uh, but just to see uh, I, I see that uh, uh, the 
the eye detect is working properly. I see it follows my face, my, well, my eye actually, and uh, it works. The sound you hear is actually uh, directly from the, the internal microphone. I don't use any external microphone, so if it's windy, that's not going to be uh, really useful, but vloggers know they need uh, some external microphone anyway. The problem with that kind of solution, I don't speak about this camera, but any camera that lack, lacks uh, stabilization is that you will need some kind of gimbal. And of, obviously with the weight of this camera, you will need some serious gimbal, not uh, a cheap one. So uh, if you want to buy that camera for vlogging, this is a good option, but you have some extra cost and some weight you will have to uh, hold on in your hand, obviously. So for me, that would not be the right solution, but many people like this solution because they have one camera that does everything, video, uh, photography, and also some vlogging. Well, uh, question of taste. And uh, the, 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 the eye detect works fine. So yes, that could be a vlogging camera. For me, it's too heavy. Uh, but people, some people go with even heavier cameras for vlogging, so that's okay. I'm used to my iPhone for vlogging or my Olympus, so it's a lot lighter. But I think this is a great camera for that. Obviously, you have a flash here, small flash. Obviously not, because top five, uh, the, the, the top uh, full-frame camera by Canon, they don't have any integrated flash, but here you have. You have a standard uh, hot shoe, not like the 4000, 2000 and 250D that have uh, no central connect connector. Here you do have it, it's a standard hot shoe and in syn it synchronizes at 250th of a second, so a good point. Uh, I remember my 5D Mark II, it was only 200th uh, of a second and actually what she, it worked, it, they said that 200 but it was actually 160, so this is good. Frame rate, 10 frame per second when you go burst some people say only 10 yeah because they've seen their phone that does more or they've seen some mirrorless that do more or but uh, <whistles> let's go back in time when uh, canon issued the 1d mark 2 or 1d mark 3 i can't remember it did it did 10 images for per second and people were whoa with this we can do everything and they did everything are people running that much faster is uh, Usain Bolt uh, doing the 100 meter in 5 seconds instead of 10 or under 10? Uh, no. So I think 10 images per second is fine. I think it's good and this is pro grade, I think. Now let's speak about video. Uh, if you see some reviews that were made when this camera was uh, launched, uh, they said there were no 24p. Well, this has been solved. Now there is a uh, firmware that, in, that has been uh, issued by Canon and you now have a 24p. So in 4K, those 24, 25, and 30 images per second, frame per second. And the good news is 4K with no crop. Because most cameras, they do a crop on 4K. Why? It's because the files are so massive to move that they actually crop them. So this way, uh, they have many, they have less things to do. And also uh, because uh, uh, they get the best part of the sensor and the uh, best part of the lens and all this that do crop. So actually, if you look at my review of the M50, when you look at it like this, when I did uh, some vlogging with it in 4K, uh, then the, the lens was not wide enough. So you would need an extra lens, a wider lens, okay? So in this case, there is no crop on 4K. So this is really good news. Then in Full HD, it does 24, 25, 30, 50, 60, 100, and 120 images per second, frame per second. So this is great because if you want to do slow motion, you can really do serious slow motion. But in uh, 100 and 120 frames per second, you lose the whole pixel. It means the autofocus will not be as good. So it depends on the kind of video you are doing. If you uh, need uh, to have a continuous sort of focus, uh, that may be a problem to lose this dual pixel. So uh, it all depends on the way you work. But slow motion at 120, it's a bit uh, okay. So maybe it's worth doing some manual focusing for you. You know, I don't know. You have to decide yourself. Testing auto exposure in video, uh, it adapts really fast because uh, actually uh, the, the green, green part, this one, is really in a dark area and uh, it adapts really fast. As you can see, the green part was that part, that dark part, so uh, the auto exposure is really fast. It adapts itself really, really fast and uh, this, is, this is good. It works really, really well. 
maximum recording time, uh, 30 minutes in a row. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, this limit, time limit of 30 minutes was due to a European uh, tax that over 30 minutes, uh, even if you buy it in the United States, I mean, camera makers made all the same cameras regardless of where, where they were selling. But this 30 minute limit was due that uh, if a camera could do more than 30 minutes, it was considered as a video camera and there was an extra tax. So they limited. Since uh, January 2019, this tax is no longer uh, existing. So many brands have uh, waived this time limit and uh, some haven't. So in the case of the Fujifilm X-T30, for example, there is a 15 uh, minute limit. People think that uh, it's because otherwise the sensor is heating. And in this case, I don't think they have a sensor problem. I think they're just protecting their Cine range. Uh, Canon has uh, cinema cameras uh, like the C500, C2, C3, C200. I can't remember exactly the names because I'm not a specialist in that. And Canon has always tried to protect their uh, Cine line. So I think this is why they still put a limit on their reflex cameras uh, when they actually do a video. This is probably why uh, this limit. Connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, obviously you can uh, remote control your uh, camera with uh, your smartphone. Speaking about remote control, there's also a remote control connector. If you want to actually uh, trigger your, the camera with the remote control, you can connect it here. You have mini HDMI, USB, microphone 3.5 uh, jack uh, connector and uh, headphone connector so you got everything you need here okay so for video great it uses SD card uh, it's compatible with with the UHS 2 so my impression about holding the camera is great uh, the feeling is nice you really have it close to you you, you, do, you, can, you actually you can use a grip but without grip it's still really nice uh, the buttons are exactly where they have to be you know exactly where they have to be buttons are really well placed i, I like the, the feeling i mean you see they've made some uh, small uh, way that it doesn't slip uh, when you turn your finger the back wheel same thing uh, here you have uh, well the back the back wheel if you want to use uh, the aperture and then the speed here you have the joystick also here all buttons are really well placed uh, here uh, the wheel to select the mode uh, you actually uh, have a button you have to lock you have to press to turn I would prefer a lock or unlock, but here you have to keep pressed to be able to turn, but for safety, uh, so you don't accidentally uh, change the configuration. I, I prefer lock and unlock, but uh, this is question of taste. It, it, people have a different opinion about that. But I'm not getting into details about this. Uh, I must say the quality is nice. The quality, the feeling, the way you use it. I think, I, I think it's a nice, really nice camera to hold in your hand, and you really feel quality. You, you really... Mm, it's nice. Of course, uh, despite being a, a top of the range camera or higher range camera, advanced user, I don't know what you call it, uh, you still have uh, the scene mode and many things that uh, beginners like. Uh, when they don't know how to do things manually, they need some uh, things that are automatic. Obviously, you have the automatic mode, the auto mode, but you also have some scene mode like uh, fireworks and and uh, landscape, portrait, all this. So if you're a beginner and you feel, oh, maybe this camera is too complicated for me. No, it is not. You have what a beginner needs and you will be able to start with that and abandon the automatic modes and presets to start doing things yourself manually as you keep learning. So it's not because it's a higher, uh, higher grade or higher range that you must think uh, it's going to be too complicated. This, this is not the case. So. The question is, you said, I said, Canon said actually, uh, this is a reflex camera with a mirrorless camera in there. So what is it, what is it more? Well, honestly, if you really pure reflex camera, you will love it because you have everything you can expect from a reflex camera. If you are more of a mirrorless guy, why do you bother with the reflex part? So maybe then it would be more uh, logical to get, if you want Canon, to get a, an M6 Mark II. I'm planning to do a review soon of the, of the M6 uh, Mark II. And uh, probably it would be maybe a better choice because actually when you look at this camera, the, the autofocus is better in mirrorless than in uh, reflex. So maybe it would be more logical to get an M6. But the M6 has uh, the M lens line 
and maybe you don't want to use M lenses, don't want to buy M lenses because you already have uh, many uh, EF or EFS lenses and you don't want to use an adapter so maybe it's more logical to go for that. It's a tough decision. If you're more a video guy and uh, priority is not photography or it's maybe one third of the time, maybe the M6 Mark II would be better. But if you're a photography, classical reflex uh, photography guy, this one is the camera. I know what is your other question. Your other question is, uh, don't point at me, you would say, don't point at me. Yeah, I do point. I say, I know it's rude, but I'm French. French are rude. That's the way we are. So, uh, is it better, this camera or the Nikon D7500? Good question. Uh, honestly, uh, the problem with the D7500, I think this is like a great mini 500, uh, D500, but is, it has lost things that were good on the 7200, like dual uh, memory card uh, or uh, more, uh, more resolution. So some people are not too um, happy with the 7500, they have no standard grip. So if you want 75, the D7500 or this one, uh, if we look at pure reflex, I think the autofocus of the D7500 is better than this one. But if we use at the mirrorless side of it, this autofocus is probably better or, or the same. And if you look at the video side, this one is definitely better. So it's a tough decision. If you already have uh, Canon lenses, go for this one. If you already have uh, Nikon lenses, go for the 7500 and don't even bother looking at this one. If you have, don't have any camera or any, uh, any of these brands, tough decision. Uh, for what I do with my Olympus, when I mean photography and video, if I would do the same with a reflex camera, I would probably go for this 90D, not the 7500. If I did only pictures, if it was action photography, I would probably go for the 7500. But for the, for the kind of camera I do, I would probably go for this one. Yeah, go for this one, the 90D, okay? So, my conclusion, do I recommend this camera? Well, yes, yes. Actually, honestly, if I, if I, if I could, I would get like some kind of ax or a machete there, so to cut, you know? And I would probably go into each brand and take many of their cameras out. They have too many models. And uh, with Canon, I would maybe keep four models. And Nikon, same thing. And Sony, same thing. So in Canon, when I start killing several cameras, I would probably keep this one for sure. Uh, if you were thinking of buying a 7D Mark I, or classic, or you want to call it secondhand, or this, go for this. It's a lot better, okay? Don't worry that this is not the 7D line. Uh, this is okay, this is fine. And if you wanted the 7D Mark II, you'll have to convince me that it's really, it's really better, you know? I think this one is a great little camera. It's not that little, but it's a great camera. And uh, I've complained many times about Canon Attitude, that they were laughing at us, all this. With this camera, they have not laughed at us. They made a great, reflex camera with some great mirrorless feature this is a good camera i do recommend this camera so thank you for watching the videos thank you photosphere for lending me the camera if you feel it may interest other people please share this video on social networks if you have not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here and also a small bell if you click on the bell you get notified when i upload a new video my website erigible.com if you have any question can leave a comment below send me an email to info at erigible.com below I also leave links of my gear on amazon and so links to other part of my youtube channel thank you very much bye